morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a wonderful day. It is bright and sunny in Southern California. I am so excited to see the warm weather come back after days and days of rains and mudslides. Something I've been meaning to do for a very long time now is a garage update. You guys have been asking questions. Where are the 600 LT, the SVJ, the ice cream truck? Where is the Rolls Royce? And I wanna answer all those questions and more. Also talk about my current cars, plans for changing those up, modifications, as well as what's coming, what's going. Basically going over every single one of the cars so you guys are up to date. All right, let's take out the Ferrari. Good morning, Lamborghini. Good morning, Ferrari. What's that? Where did that even come from? All right, time to fire her up. Key in, ignition on. I thought we would start off with my latest acquisition, this 2015 Ferrari 458 Speciale Aperta. My first Ferrari ever, my first introduction to the brand, and I have absolutely fallen head over heels with the car. I bought it with 1,500 miles on it. Can't believe it's been five months with the car already. Right now, I've got just a tad under 3,000 miles. So, double the miles since I've bought it. Oh my God. I took delivery of the Speciale Aperta right before Monterey Car Week. It was one of the greatest adventures ever, driving this car up to Pebble Beach and using it during Car Week. So how did I end up buying this car? Well, honestly, it was a little bit random. I have always, always loved the Speciale, and I saw a Speciale Aperta about a month before I ended up buying this, and I absolutely fell in love. It looked so stunning, so beautiful, and knowing how amazing the Speciale is to drive, I thought, you know what? That could be an epic next car. The other thing is the rarity. They only made 499 of these, so I was thinking, you know, long term, with Ferrari's brand's reputation and the limited edition, and the fact that they didn't make very many, means that this could be a good investment in the long term. This car is finished in stunning triple layer yellow. I mean, look how it shines, almost like gold in the sunlight. This blue contrasted stripe down the center with the white accent, and then the interior is absolutely marvelous. We'll go over that in a little bit, but I love the lines of the Speciale. Of the cars that I own, this is absolutely the most fun to drive. The engagement, the sense of speed, the steering feel, the rawness is incredible in the Speciale. Let's hop in the interior. Of course, weight savings was very important with this car. Full carbon fiber door panels, pretty much everything in the interior is carbon fiber, carbon fiber steering wheel with the tachometer, uh, shift indicator lights on the top of the wheel. Love that feature about it. Alcantara, and then these carbon fiber racing buckets in blue and yellow. In terms of the future of this car, in terms of modifications, really, I'm not planning on doing much at all. The typical modifications you'd think of doing would be a wrap and exhaust and wheels, and I love the way the paint looks. The wheels, honestly, I think Ferrari did a fantastic job, and I'm a little bit nervous modifying the car in any way, shape, or form, because Ferrari purists are just that, Ferrari purists. Any modifications uh, might devalue the car. The exhaust, it sounds amazing at wide open throttle, and stock, it shoots flame. <laughs> So not really much I'd have to do there. When looking to get this car, I was looking at one other vehicle and that was the Carrera GT. Decided against it for a couple of reasons. One, it was a little bit more expensive than the Speciale and two, the maintenance costs on the Carrera GT are significantly higher. The nice thing about this car is at the end of the day, it is a 458. Uh, maintenance hasn't been an issue whatsoever on the car. It is a pretty darn bulletproof vehicle. Knock on wood, I hope I don't regret 
saying that. So that's the status on the Speciale. I take it out to special events, things that are a little bit shorter distance so I can keep the mileage down. Reason being is the highest mileage one I've ever seen has 6,000 miles. And as cool as it would be to have the highest mileage Speciale Aperta, it wouldn't be that cool because I'd have the cheapest one at the same time. So that is the one bummer of this car is it's the first car I've ever actually had to worry about the mileage. So it's a blessing and a curse, but it does make every single mile all that more special. No pun intended, but seriously, driving this car is absolutely incredible. The feel... The feeling it gives you behind the wheel is like nothing else. All right, next up, the Lamborghini. All right, Lamborghini time. Unfortunately, I already started her up, so she's not gonna be as cold. Here we have it, my favorite car that I have ever owned, my 2015 Lamborghini Huracan. That's right, this is the most fun to drive car I've ever owned, but the Huracan is still my favorite. I bought it in July of 2016 with a thousand miles on it, and since then, I have traveled all over the country, done so many rallies, met so many friends, had so many incredible memories, and I'm now at 28,500 miles on the Lamborghini Huracan. And when I say the ownership experience has been flawless, I seriously mean it. Nothing has broken on this car in that amount of time of intense driving. All I've had to do is brake pads, tires, oil changes, and typical stuff that you would do on any car. 11,000 miles ago, I did the biggest modification I've ever done on any car, and that was the decision to supercharge my Lamborghini Huracan. And it was the single best mod I have ever done. VF Engineering supercharged it 805 horsepower. It is crazy fast. Zero to 60 V-Box log, 2.3 seconds. The quarter mile in 9.9 .9 seconds. And the best part is it has been reliable day after day. It also sounds absolutely wicked, but completely transformed the car from something that was fast and fun to drive to something that is absolutely out of this world in terms of acceleration. I did a drag race half mile event against a 918 Spider, and they were pretty much neck and neck the entire way. Not bad for a Lamborghini Huracan. I also got these amazing Anarchy wheels that I absolutely love, as well as an Avant Garde Exotics rear exhaust that sounds mean as hell. Although, it is pretty loud for the new exhaust laws, but I think I'll deal with it. Future plans for the Lamborghini, potentially a new wrap. I love the way this wrap looks, although I am thinking about changing it up, potentially some new wheels as well, and maybe a valved exhaust. In terms of power upgrades, 805 is plenty. I don't think I'd go twin turbo at this point, but you never know what the future has in store. But seriously, the build quality and reliability of the Huracan is incredible. If you are thinking about getting one, I highly, highly recommend it. It's been one of the easiest ownership experiences of any car that I've ever had. Alrighty, then we got the Mercedes. Not a bad view in the backup camera there. Behind me is my 2018 Mercedes E63 S AMG. I took delivery of this car December of 2017 in Germany. That's right, I did European delivery and it was an absolutely insane experience. Not without its issues though. If you guys have been following me for a while, you remember I actually showed up in Germany to take delivery of this car and was told by Mercedes right when I got there, that my car wasn't going to be ready. Thankfully, they were able to figure things out and a couple days later, my car was done and I was able to drive it all the way to the Nürburgring on the Autobahn and all throughout Germany. What a trip that was to remember. Did it with my dad. Honestly, I am never going to forget it. I've actually still got the German transportation plates on the back of my car. Hopefully I can uh, continue rocking that without too much hassle, but I think it looks cool. And reminds me where this car came from. The E63 was the first car that I ever fully got to spec out myself. There's something that feels truly special about that. Now the Lamborghini Huracan, I got lucky. I found a used one with the exact spec I wanted. The S-Class that I had as a daily driver before this 
had most of the options, but not all of them. But this was super cool, working with the dealer, picking out all of the options from the selenite gray Magno exterior to the black wheels, the carbon fiber interior, the upgraded Burmester sound system. Every single thing was picked, and I think it came out exceptionally well. This has been an amazing, amazing daily driver. Mix of comfort, although nowhere near as comfortable as the S-Class was, but still incredible on a daily basis. It's practical, and it is crazy, crazy fast. 602 horsepower stock, although a couple of months ago, I went to VF and decided it's time to boost the power. So now we've got 740 horsepower. Zero to 60 happens in 2.8 seconds. It is a beast. I absolutely love the interior of this car. The carbon fiber work is exquisite. I got the sport bucket seats, which actually are a lot more comfortable than I was expecting, as well as the upgraded Burmester sound system. This actually rotates outwards when you turn on the speakers. Let's try this. Look at that. Why does it do that? No idea, but it looks really damn cool. The E63 also sounds amazing. Four liter twin turbocharged V8, but Mercedes nailed the exhaust note, which a lot of manufacturers nowadays haven't been able to do with twin turbocharged engines. I got the upgraded sports exhaust from the factory. And honestly, I don't even think there's any reason to change it. The biggest difference between this car and all of my others is that the E63 is a lease. The lease runs out December of this year, which means I've got to start planning for a replacement daily driver. Although I love this car so much, I've actually thought about buying out the lease, which is not something I would have considered at the beginning of the process. Wanted to do a short two-year lease to change things up, but Man, do I love this car. Cars I am considering replacing this with, uh, the new BMW M5 it would be cool to see the other side of the spectrum. Also, I've even thought about the Tesla Model 3 Performance. After driving that, absolute blast. I kind of like the idea of being totally stealth mode with a daily driver. And then of course, uh, I've got two really loud cars here and more coming, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, also, I drove the Cullinan, loved that. Pretty darn expensive, but man was driving the Cullinan a truly remarkable experience. So we will see, but I have very much enjoyed my time with the E63. We've still got 11 more months left, so plenty of adventures in store with this car. Man, the rain and the mud has made this filthy. I've got to get my cars washed. All right, guys, I know you have been wondering where the ice cream truck has been for a long time. So we're going to talk about that now. Six months ago, I decided it would be a good idea to buy an ice cream truck. That's right, I was looking for either a mail truck or an ice cream truck, and believe it or not, it is incredibly hard to find one of these things. I scoured the internet, Craigslist, eBay, every source I could find, even drove to random dealerships that looked like they would sell them, and I couldn't find one anywhere. Finally, one popped up on Craigslist in the middle of absolutely nowhere, and I went to check it out. Ended up buying it, that was the ice cream truck that I had, didn't run whatsoever, but it did look like an ice cream truck. I was so excited for the project. The plan was eventually to completely swap the powertrain, put something like a 2JZ in it, put a Hellcat motor in it, and make it basically a drag car that looks like an ice cream truck. Maybe even turn it into a merch vehicle so I can go to car shows and meet up with you guys. I had this envision of going to a car show, rolling down the side of it, serving ice cream to fans. It would have been super, super fun. Uh, but a couple of things happened. A big issue is I never actually received the title from the owner of the truck. They didn't have it with them currently, even though they owned the truck, apparently, uh, and I gave them a deposit for it, but I never ended up getting the title. So I wasn't able to register it, and I was a little bit sketched out, especially if I built it and drove it on the road, driving an unregistered vehicle. So that was one of the main problems. The other thing is, yeah, I got a little bit in over my head in terms of how difficult that project was going to be. The entire frame and chassis was completely rusted, so I would have basically had to build a new car from the ground up, which would have been a lot of fun if I didn't have 
the rest of my life to deal with. I still wanted to be able to produce videos all the time on the channel, not just on the ice cream truck. And I was worried that in order to get this project done, I'd have to be working on it 24 seven. The other difficulty was finding a bunch of different shops to do so many different pieces. It wasn't just an engine swap. It was basically building a car from the ground up. So it proved to be a little bit too difficult of a challenge. I'd love to do something like that in the future, but I ended up bringing the ice cream truck back to its original owner and giving it back to them. So that unfortunately is what happened to the ice cream truck. Next up is the Rolls Royce Silver Seraph. That's right, for a while on the channel, I decided to get my first Rolls Royce. I had always wanted one, something luxurious, something comfortable, and of course, the panache of owning a Rolls Royce. But instead of spending a ton of money, I found a Rolls Royce Silver Seraph for $35,000. It was one of the most fun cars I've ever had on the channel. It was black and red two-tone. It looked absolutely ridiculous, but there was something so fun about that car. And it created the character Jeeves, where Alex put on this top hat. We had such a blast with that car. One day, we even decided to straight pipe the Silver Seraph, which actually turned out to sound impressively awesome. It almost sounded like a Countach. <laughs> So why did I get that car? Well, honestly, honestly, Alex showed me it and I went, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Let's go check it out. We took it out for a spin and I went, yep, I think I'd quite like one of these. Ended up driving it for about three weeks. Had Alex drive me around in it a bunch to reviews. I slept in the back a bunch. It had reclining rear seats. Honestly, one of the most comfortable cars I've ever been in. The Silver Seraph wasn't without its problems, however. It had this weird sparking issue where when you turn the car off, the entire bottom of the car would start sparking and making a really creepy noise. It also had a decent amount of electrical issues and little things that I didn't want to deal with. So I did eventually end up giving the car back to the dealership. The biggest thing is I really didn't think I was going to use the car nearly enough. Totally impulsive decision. It was a blast while it lasted, but I didn't really see a use for the car in a long-term future. I do kind of want to see if it's still available because filming videos on that thing was amazing. Maybe it's still at the dealership, but I did give back the Rolls-Royce Silver Seraph. Next up is the 600 LT, a future car in the Vehicle Virgin's garage. I've been thinking about what could replace the Lamborghini Huracan for a very long time, whether fully replace it where I get rid of the car or as a supplement. Now, I looked into the GT3 RS and decided after some serious thought that I wouldn't get a GT3 RS, but when the 600 LT came out at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, I absolutely fell in love. I've learned after time, over the course of driving tons of supercars, I've learned my specific taste, and that is light, nimble, raw sports cars, exactly like this Speciale Aperta. So when McLaren announced they were going to be doing an LT version of their lightweight 570S, it immediately piqued my interest. Saw it at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, wasn't able to drive it then, but I was then invited out to Budapest, where I drove the car for the first time on the Hungaro ring absolutely fell head over heels in love. The steering feel is absolutely out of this world, and it's one of the few cars you can drive extremely slowly and still feel like it's exciting, especially with the roof scoop and the Senna seats and the carbon fiber accents and the fender vents. It really spoke to my emotions. So I decided to order a 600 LT, and you guys are wondering, where the heck is the car? And I'm happy to report that I've just gotten word that the car finished production, at McLaren, then was sent to MSO. I'm getting the roof scoop on the car as well as the Club Sport Pro package, which comes with a roll cage in the back and the center seats. MSO did the roof scoop and the car has been completed. Right now, we are waiting for it to ship from Europe 
to the US. I was told by the dealer it should be about a month until I can finally drive my new 600 LT. So we've got a month until the 600 LT arrives. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, why hasn't it come yet? You're seeing deliveries of them all over the country. The biggest issue was the roof scoop and the Senna seats. It takes more time for them to add the roof scoop and there was a shortage of Senna seats, obviously taken up first by the actual McLaren Sennas. These are really, really intense bucket seats, but after sitting in them on the track and driving the car for a long period of time with the Senna seats, I'm honestly impressed with how comfortable they are on a daily basis. Fingers crossed that I don't regret that decision, but they looked so cool. I didn't think I could order the car without them. So it's taking a little bit longer than normal because of those two options, but it is absolutely worth the wait. I was told I could get the car significantly earlier if I didn't go with that, but I didn't want to get the car two months early and then see the deliveries of all the roof scoop Senna seated cars and regret that decision. I believe Street Speed 717, my buddy Mike, his car is almost done as well. And we might be taking delivery of both of our 600 LTs at a similar time. We talked to each other a lot during the build and design process, kind of making sure we both didn't have the exact same car, what colors we were getting and options, but we should have two really, really epically spec 600 LT builds. If you guys didn't see my video in Budapest where I announced the spec, it is Lantana Purple, which is this deep purple color that kind of fades to blue, really unique. I've seen it on a 675 LT after driving a Movine Blue 570 GT around Goodwood Festival of Speed Week, that's when I really started to fall in love with purple. I thought it would be totally unique and bring out some of the lines of the 600 LT, especially with that roof scoop. Oh, the car looks so awesome. And of course, stock, it shoots flames. So I can't wait to roast some marshmallows, to cook some steaks on the back of the 600 LT. All right, lastly, where is the Aventador SVJ? I ordered an SVJ before it actually was announced at Pebble Beach. I wanna say back in June of last year. I don't remember exactly, I don't wanna get that wrong, but it was a very long time ago. Seriously, special thanks to Solomondrin. Uh, Alejandro was the reason I was able to get an allocation on the car. So seriously, thank you so much. Then Pebble Beach came around and we saw the official unveiling of the car. They had just announced the Nürburgring record, which was unbelievably impressive. Uh, Lamborghini has come such a long way at proving that they aren't just crazy looking, crazy sounding cars. They are incredible to drive and super quick as well. They've now got two cars that can lap the Nürburgring in less than seven minutes. Pretty damn impressive. And I'm curious to see how the new Huracan Evo does as well. But when Pebble Beach came around, they announced the number of cars they were going to build. Now, originally rumors were circling and I was under the impression when I ordered the car that they'd make about 350 SVJs and only coupes. It seemed to make sense. They made 600 Aventador SVs, which we would have thought was the final edition of Aventador, given the fact that they did the same thing with the Murcielago and they made 500 SV Roadsters. So I thought, you know, this is a special edition version of that final edition. This has got to be the last one they're going to limit the production. So when I found out that they're making 900 coupes, I don't believe they've announced the production numbers for the Roadsters yet, but judging by what they've done in the past, they'd likely make 800 Roadsters. I was really disappointed that they would make their new special edition last car less rare than an SV. So initially, uh, when I found that out, I was a little bit taken aback, especially because it's such an expensive car that to me, it is very important that it maintains its value. If, if the Speciale Aperta was gonna plummet to half its value in two years, I wouldn't have bought the car. Now, the next thing that bummed me out is when they announced the SVJ63. Having not owned a Sesto Elemento or a Veneno or being an extremely important Lamborghini client, there was no way I was going to get an allocation for an SVJ63. Had a bunch of friends apply and nobody that I know was able to actually get one. But what bummed me out is I was thinking that getting the SVJ allocation, we got the final edition. This is the most special last naturally aspirated V12 Lambo. And then they make way more than normal, but then they make the 63 edition and that's going to be the one collectors are looking for. So I went, okay, so it's more production than before. 
and I can't get the special edition one, and I, I thought they all were gonna be special edition. So I was pretty disappointed about that, but I got over it. And then I went for a ride a couple of months ago, actually about a month ago, in a new SVJ. And while it was fun, I wasn't actually as impressed as I thought I would be, mostly actually with the sound. They completely changed the sound of the Aventador SV and the S when they went to the SVJ. It actually doesn't sound nearly as good uh, as I was expecting or as those previous generation cars. I actually think a stock Lamborghini Aventador sounds better than the SVJ. It also didn't feel that crazy to me. And that was a huge bummer. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's an incredible car, but as spec, my car was approaching $600,000. And for that kind of money, I just wasn't that excited about the car anymore. So unfortunately, I did decide to cancel my order on the SVJ. I am bummed because I really did want to finally have a V12 naturally aspirated Lambo with scissor doors, but getting cold feet on the car and not being as pumped as I thought, what is the point of spending all that money on a car that you end up not being all that excited for? There's absolutely no point and it's not a good idea whatsoever. In fact, a car that almost excites me more than the SVJ is the rumors for the Aventador successor. So I'm thinking that might be the first V12 Lamborghini that I end up buying. Apparently it's a downsized four liter V12 with a hybrid system. That's right, a hybrid V12, so similar to a La Ferrari, that makes nearly a thousand horsepower. And it's not gonna have that old clunky single clutch gearbox, it's going to have a double clutch gearbox. That is a recipe for an epic car. So imagine uh, when I found out all that information, I'm thinking, all right, I get the SVJ, I'm not that stoked about it. And then the Aventador successor comes out and it's just better in every way than the SVJ. Um, yeah, I started to think, not really worth it. So there you guys have it, a full update on all of the cars from my current cars, the planned modifications, what I'm doing with these, to what is coming in the future. A month till the 600 LT arrives, that is going to be a fantastic day. And hopefully that answers all of the questions you have about the other vehicles. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.